Gene here. Before we jump into today's show, just a quick reminder, I am still running the Emotional Core Challenge. I have a couple of spots still left if you'd like to join up. For more information, all you need to do is go to tappingqa.com slash 16. That's tappingqa.com, the number 16, which is 1-6. I hope you enjoy today's show. This is Gene Montrose telling welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 304, originally aired February 7th, 2018. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Today, we're having a conversation about how we can listen to our system and our body to be able to have access to more information to make transformation happen faster. Before we do that, just a reminder, we have an entire archive of audios just like this one waiting for you to dive into. There are over 165 hours of free tap-along audios, training, interviews. If there is a topic that you are looking for some help on, we have probably covered it. All you need to do is go to tappingqnapodcast.com where you can find all of the information We also have instructions there on how you can subscribe to the podcast on Android and Apple devices. They're just all of these great resources waiting for you. Make sure you check that out. So today's conversation is with my friend Deborah Miller. And the conversation we have is about what are the things that we can do to use our physical body to get information about the emotional and physical things that we're suffering with And more importantly, when we do a good job of listening to this physical information, oftentimes it gives us the opportunity to deal with issues before they grow into something much bigger. Now, at the end of the interview, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a little tool that I use that is based on the conversation we have here. So listen to the interview, and then I will have something a little extra for you at the end. Enjoy my conversation with Deborah. In our conversation um, before uh, we started hitting recording, we we, we were just talking about this idea of how we're disconnected from our body. And because of the modern world that we live in, we don't necessarily pay attention to it the way we might once have when we used to do physical labor all the time that we have these sedentary lives. What What have you noticed about people and their connection and their understanding about what's going on inside of their body, just kind of moment to moment, not necessarily when we're looking at long-term health. Yes, I find that most people are so busy, internet, WhatsApp, work, stress, TV, and things like that, that they're not paying much attention to their body anymore. And what happens is your body starts giving you these little messages, you know, a little ache here, a little soreness there you know, your lower back hurts or you get indigestion because it's trying to talk to you and ask you to pay attention to what it needs. And most of us tend to ignore it until the signals have to get really loud. So we need to come back in and pay more attention to what our body's trying to tell us. But it speaks a language that's different. It just doesn't say, hey, I need a nap right now. It gives you an ache or it makes your eyelids drop and you're half asleep as you're doing your work. So we need to learn how to interpret that language. And so that's what I would like to talk about today. So I really like like that idea um, that that the sensations that we're feeling is information because oftentimes what we're doing is all I'm doing is saying, oh, that is uncomfortable. That is painful. That is annoying. That is getting in my way. And I'm only looking at the symptom as an end in itself. And when we only process it that way, it's difficult. But what you're talking about is this idea of this is information and this is the language that the body has to communicate with us. So in the beginning, is it is it really as simple as going, oh, this is information I need to listen? Or is there something else that we need to do that is the first step? I'd say just use it as the information and the body's trying to give you a message then we get to start looking at how do we interpret the message. So is that ache 
because you've been sitting at the computer and you need to get up and move your body a little bit and, and have some flexibility because our bodies are made to move. That's, that's the traditional, more physical lifestyle that we used to have. Or is there some emotional issue going on in the present? Let's say your boss is giving you a deadline and you're not getting up because you, you, you know, your body's saying, I need to move so that I can come back and focus and do what I need to do. And you're going, my boss gave me a deadline. I have to finish this right now. So you've got information there, but we ignore it, okay? So we have to learn to take the information, not ignore it, and then start just kind of scanning through it and saying, well, what could this be about? Is this about the tension, about what, you know, just sitting and doing this work that I need to do? Or is it tension because there's tension between me and my coworkers? Is it tension between me and my boss? Or is there something deeper and an older belief that you have about you're not worthy, you're not capable, et cetera, et cetera, that then is creating that ache as well? So, you know, there's there's layers to this information. But the lovely thing with tapping is we can just start tapping with that information and saying, I have an ache in my back, for example. And as you start tapping, what happens is we're reducing the stress hormones. And as you reduce the stress hormones, then your regenerative hormones can produce, be produced, and it gives you a, a physical boost and it gives your immune system a physical boost. It's kind of a win-win in, in all ways. So, I, and I can really appreciate that. And I love the idea of once we tune into something, just start tapping and that's a great entry point. Um, but at the exact same time, what you've proposed there is this idea of the symptoms exactly the same. It's pain and the ache in my back could be physical. It could be emotional. I, I almost think of it like a dog barking at me. Every single dog bark sounds like a bark. Um, it's just going, Hey, 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 Hey. And the body is doing that. And what you proposed is doing a little tapping that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, how then do we make sure that we're not just doing just kind of some temporary relief versus getting the right. opportunity to figure out what's underneath. Is it this physical thing? Is it something emotional or does it not matter because I feel better in this moment? I think there's a little bit of both. Okay. So if you're doing the tapping in the moment, you notice the ache, it may just be a subtle ache that you need to release. And by reducing your stress, it lets it go. Then it depends on, is this a chronic issue that you have? You know, are you thinking the same things over and over about not being worthy, for example, or having issues with someone? Um, is it a physical thing that you're constantly sitting in this example and, and it's causing this back ache? Is it something that has a long term effect on you? You know, and then you can start looking at, well, identify the location in your body. Where is it? Is it your shoulder, your neck? Is it your digestion? Is it your knee? And is it a specific organ? You know, you, you know, is your heartbeat erratic? Uh, are you having issues breathing deeply? You know, do you have a lot of um, issues with your gallbladder and things like that? So the scientist in me looks at the emotional part, the physical sim symptom that's coming up. And then I try and look at the body part and the organs or the system that is giving you a sign. And then... I, as a scientist, goes in and go, oh, okay, gallbladder issues, bile. Bile is a really nasty-looking color. It's kind of this yellowy-orange color. It's usually associ associated with kinds of angers and frustrations. So then you can start layering these things and go, you know what? I have a lot of anger, and I have a lot of digestion problems because I can't digest the anger I'm feeling towards myself or towards someone else. So then you can go beyond just this is, you know, the temporary I have an ache or I have a little bit of indigestion. And then you can go, okay, what am I angry about? Who am I angry with? Is this new or is it old? You know, is this just my pattern or is it my family pattern? For generations, my family has been angry. And then you can start dissecting the present moment 
And then you can sit down and start going through systematically and look at where in this example you're angry and start releasing all the issues about anger and then look at the patterns of where you've learned about anger from either your family members or someone in school or you know, your boss or just society in general about what we need to be angry about. And so then I, I kind of start taking them apart and I go through that in kind of layers. So I can I can appreciate all of that, but what you just described there is the really sophisticated understanding of what's going on from the idea of a practitioner. And yes. I don't I I I find I know that if I'm feeling pain in my back, it's going to be really hard for me to go. You know, I have this pattern of anger in my life, um, yes. because because if we're talking from this point of view of we're starting from the disposition, we're not paying attention close enough. I don't know that I'm going to have that sort of insight to be able to see that clearly. Exactly. So 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 how do I then do that? How do I how do I get to a point? Because I mean, what you laid out was this really comprehensive. This is a treatment plan for going after all these specific issues. I'm sitting here going, God, my back hurts. <laughs> exactly. And, and, I, and, I, and I don't know how to get from here to there on my own. How, how does okay. how does someone do that? OK, so that's why I prefaced the previous example was for me as a scientific person looking at things. So I've also worked with children with cancer. Children with cancer don't know what a gallbladder is. They don't know what a liver is. They don't really know what any of those things do. And the majority of people don't. So one of the simple things you can do is look at it. And by doing kind of body talk, imagine that your body or this ache, let's say it's the back pain again, is another person who's talking to you and ask it questions. So it's really strange. And people at first go, oh, my back's not going to tell me anything. But if you stop and get a little bit still and imagine, even it, let's imagine your back is in front of you and it's actually looking at you and it has a message to tell you and you go back, this ache you have, what does it mean? And, and if you don't get like words or anything like that, you can sometimes just do it in a very simple way. What color is this ache or this pain? You know, and sometimes we just have to go, where is it in my body that this is really aching? And so when you start doing that and say, body, I know I'm not good at listening to you. I'd like to listen to you. Would you tell me what is going on? And then ask it simple questions. You know, it's like, what color is it? How big is it? Is it new? Is it old? And then whatever kind of response you get, let's, let's say it's black or it's purple. And then you can just do some simple tapping about, it, even though I have this purple black ache in my back and start doing that and then continue to go back and continue to ask your body, you know, did that release it? Is there more? What else is there? And you can do it by colors, by words, by feelings, by sensations, by memories. You can say, is there a memory here? And so that way you don't have to be a scientist to be able to listen to your body. Some of it is just saying, body, I want to listen to you. And then start listening to what it has to say. It's a strange thing to do when you begin because most people, my body doesn't talk to me. But as you listen, it's amazing when I work with people in this way, how they go, oh, you know, this memory about my mom came up or, oh, this, this pain from when I fell down when I was skating when I was a kid popped into my head. So then the things can come out of the subconscious so we can get a deeper insight into what our body is trying to tell us. So inside of that answer, I, I hear three really important things that I love a lot. Yes. The first is the fact that we are... We are notoriously bad eyewitnesses to our own experience. <laughs> um, that we, we come up with reasons why we are the way that we are so we can explain it. And it may or may not be true, but we have this story. And the process that you described, I do some similar type stuff with my clients, is we're giving ourselves the ability to disassociate our conscious mind from trying to analyze and dissect what is going on. And we're giving the body an, an opportunity to communicate with us so we're not intellectually trying to figure it out and the system gets its opportunity to bring stuff through. So number one, I love that. Yes. Number two, I love the idea about how 
even though in your first example you gave all of this really specific detail of these things that we could uncover, here you demonstrated how easily it is for us, even when we don't have all of that information, we can tap in a really effective way through whatever metaphor the system is bringing to us. Um because sometimes we don't actually have to know what the root cause is. Sometimes it's useful, but sometimes it's not. It doesn't really matter if I remembered what happened in the past. If it's presenting as a blue blob and the blue blob evaporates while I'm tapping and that thing goes away, awesome. I never need to know what's going on there. And the fact that you're giving us this really easy entry point to go after stuff is useful. And then the third thing that I love in there, in that last little bit, talking about memories that come forward, my... My single favorite phrase that a client will ever say to me is, this probably has nothing to do with it, but if you are sitting in your office and you have a pain in your back and all of a sudden you think about your childhood when you slipped and fell and you had to deal with something, that's not a huge surprise. What you've been able to do is allow the system to bring something forward that is really super useful in that moment. And the fact that it came forward because you gave that space is useful but we also don't have to have that memory in order for us to have this huge amount of transformation. I agree completely. And I agree completely with your, your summary of, of what I w- examples that I was giving. Yeah. So then, so I guess then what it sounds like is, is like we said at the beginning, the, the, the two biggest things to do is to tune in in some sort of intentional conscious way and just start asking questions and giving ourselves permission to do that in a way where we can trust the information that's coming forward. Exactly. And, you know, and the other thing is, you know, when we get overwhelmed by trying to f- you know, kind of dissect and, and try and figure out where all this pain is coming from. You know, tapping is wonderful. You, you have this self-help tool and you can take it and you can use it and you can release a lot on your own. But always remember, there's those of us who love doing tapping and we love helping people find what's going on underneath and we can help guide you along the way as well. So it's not like, you know, you have to identify and interpret everything your body's telling you all by yourself. Absolutely. I think I think that's really important that it, it's a great self-help tool that gives us a chance to unpack stuff. And it also gives us the opportunity to go, oh, I have reached the the edge of, of my ability to deal with things. And it's time for me to reach out in a really specific way. So inside of this... I think that, and I'm willing. I'm willing to bet. I know the answer to this, just knowing you, is that what we've talked about so far is doing something in a responsive way, and, and it's not as if my system is only speaking to me when there is distress. That there is information that's constantly coming from my system, and when I'm in pain, it's kind of like my system's really trying to get my attention. What are things that we can do regularly? So that we are more in tune to what our system is saying. We are getting this information before it gets to a place where it's like really extreme discomfort. Yes. For me, it's summarized in the term mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And mindfulness mainly just means pay attention all the time. And as you pay attention more often, the body can give you subtle signals that you can catch sooner and take care of issues before they become a major issue. And so one of these things that happens is your body gives you these softer, more gentle signals. And when you don't listen, the signals have to become louder and maybe more painful or come with more frequency for us to to listen. It's our body kind of knocking on the door or knocking on our mind going, are you paying attention? And so... By listening in this mindful way, we don't have to let things get to those extreme illnesses that that show up. Um, And so I think of it as a way to start prevention on the emotional end, on the physical end, by reducing the stress hormones and giving your immune system a chance to take care of things. But if you do have a serious illness, you can still do tapping. I've done this with the kids with cancer all the time. And it's amazing the things that show up and what we can do with tapping to help release the underlying issues to something that is more severe. My preference is is that we do mindfulness and we pay attention before we get to that point. 
and 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 I think and I think one of the things that you said in there that is that I, I really like is this idea of the more mindful we are, the more present we are, the more subtle cues we recognize. And I just I just think about that in terms of any relationship we have. You know, there are people that I've known for a really long time, and <clears throat> the four of us will be sitting around a dinner table, and someone will say something, and I will just see a flicker of an eyebrow on a friend of mine, and I will know exactly what they are thinking. Because I have exactly. decades of experience with them that this really subtle movement on their face tells an entire story for someone who knows what to look for and is paying attention. And this idea that the more we tune into and the more we are aware of our system and our body, the easier it is for us to catch the information with the system providing less and less information because we're so attuned to those things. And I love that idea of the sooner we get to something and we're able to transform it, then the less we have to deal with long-term ramifications of some of those things. Yes, I agree. And, you know, and some of these signals are emotional mm -hmm. and some are truly physical. So if you've gone and eaten something that your body doesn't really like, it usually gives you a sign mm -hmm. that maybe that's not what you should be eating anymore. But most of us ignore it. So then when we go back to mindfulness, it's like, oh, my body is telling me to not eat these things. Or we can also look at cravings. My body is craving something. But we can look at the craving as well as our body speaking to us and saying, does it need a specific vitamins, minerals, if you're into the science aspect? Or is it just looking for something like comfort? Is it looking for something creamy and warm? You know, or is it looking for something spicy? And those small signs, too, can give us an indication of what we are in excess of in our life or which we are missing in our life. And then instead of using, in this example, the food as, as a substitute, then we can use our mindfulness to go, you know what, I'm looking for comfort. I really need to call my friends and maybe go dancing or just go have a dinner with them instead of overeating or comfort eating in replacement of something that is really truthfully what we, not, what we want and our body's trying to tell us that. So then to put you on the spot a little bit, okay. what does it look like daily for you? How, how do you, or at least plan to, or actually in practice, make sure that you're trying to be mindful in this way? Um, after lots and lots of practice, um, I've kind of summarized it after years of the first thing I would do, go for a walk with my dog and do tapping. Mm -hmm. That was my standard way of doing it. And as I got more and more aware of doing mindfulness, now I pay attention to things and I've summarized as I'm either in unconditional love or I'm not. Okay. I'm in unconditional love or in anger, unconditional love or sadness, unconditional love or fear. And you can name all the others that you want. And as I begin to just notice that tiny shift and it's like, let's just say sadness. And maybe it's on a scale of zero to 10, a one. And I try and catch it at that point. I was like, oh, what was going on? Where did I disconnect? Where did I not honor myself? And then I start doing some tapping, breathing, meditation, um, all the tools that I have in my toolkit in that very moment and catch it. And sometimes I only need to do two rounds and it just flips the energy enough to get me back in that very comfortable, stable place. So is that something that you're doing at a particular time like you used to do walking the dog in the morning? Is it something that you're interrupting your day to pay attention? Is it because you do it so much you just notice it when it comes up? How do you then choose to do that sort of work? Most of the time, um, I like to do things in the morning because it sets my sets me up for the day of how I want mm -hmm. it to be. But we all know the day has things that show up. And I tend to now just do it whenever it shows up. And so, you know, a feeling shows up and I might just do three to 10 rounds or, or longer if I have time, mm -hmm. or I'll jot it down and I'll go back and I'll really sit down and I'll work on the issue. Or I'll do a couple of rounds just to clear out and get steady to do what I need to do. And I have it written down and then I will go back when I have the moment. And then I will go through the deeper issues and start really, um, really looking at that. And so I'll give you an example. Yesterday I was thinking about, um, antibodies. I was listening to a talk about 
you know, the brains and, and Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid disease. And I was like, oh, well, there's a lot of, you know, autoimmune diseases and autoimmune diseases, antibodies, they attack, right? What is not good in us? And I was like, wow, you know, so we have this aspect emotionally of where we attack ourselves and we blame and attack others. And so I made my own personal correlation between this physical autoimmune system where our bodies are attacking ourselves in a way, or where am I attacking myself emotionally? And so now I'm playing around doing tapping on where am I saying something not so nice to my body or thinking something not so nice to someone else as, as an attack and then releasing myself as I'm tapping from the need to attack. Because why? Because I want to go back to the energy of, of unconditional love. And so the, the topics will change daily you know, depending on where I am, whom I'm around and what's going on. And then I like to look at things as a mirror. So how am I feeling? How am I responding emotionally? And also look at what's going on around me as my mirror, right? So my interaction with myself is my mirror of my beliefs. And then I watch things going on around me. And I was like, where is that mirroring some belief or some behavior that I still have that I want to clear. And then I do the tapping on that. And I, I would be willing to bet that because you had a morning practice, it made it easier for you to have a conscious practice throughout the day. Absolutely. Initially, you had to train yourself at this time every single day, I'm going to think in this way. And you started exercising that muscle of paying attention so that then as that was something that became a natural disposition, as the day was unfolding, you go, oh, look at that. I am more aware and I'm going to notice that in a slightly different way and that the one preceded the other. Exactly. And um, there are times where I do tapping before I go to sleep as well just to like not go to sleep carrying whatever issue came up during the day. And I will also do tapping with some gratitude to kind of tap in that happier, lighter emotion as well. And so I use those two because when you're in the energy of unconditional love, you're open, you're expansive and you feel it. And then I observe that when I'm out and about And so I'll do tapping or I'll do an unconditional love meditation, for example. And those I tend to do sometimes when I'm on the bus or when I'm walking somewhere, I'll pick a point and I'll just be tapping on my wrist, walking down the street. I'm not thinking of anything. And I find myself open and expanded. And people say, you're the only one smiling on the street. And I'm not even aware because uh, I am, but I'm not. Uh, That's, you know, so there I am. I'm in a more open, expansive energy and other people notice it because then I'm reflecting that, that loving energy out to them because I'm choosing it. And then as well, when I feel anger or frustration out in the street and I start feeling like it's coming at me, then I can be in my mindfulness and go, do I want to go there? You know, what is that reflecting of my old beliefs and can I release it? And many times I've just done a little tapping that, you know, I release this, this frustration and anger that's around me. It's not mine. And I send everybody love and it's like, I'll be walking in two blocks and later the whole energy has shifted. So there is an aspect of practicing mindfulness. It's, you know, we, we tend to just, um, do everything possible to ignore these signs and avoid things. So it is a practice and, And the more you do it, it actually becomes more fun. It's like, oh, look, there's something there. Let me deal with that and let me clear that out. And doesn't it feel good to come back to that unconditional love feeling again? What I think is really interesting there is what you're, you're reflecting emotionally when you're talking about the sense of these negative emotions and the sense of being an unconditional love is a similar thing that happens when we're tapping as we go from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic systems. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why we burp or we yawn or, or we relax or we sigh is as we're shifting into that other place of the system being in a place where it's caring for itself again – Emotionally, it's interesting. It's the exact same reflection. Like it, you're, you're describing it on one level, the emotional level, and we know tapping what happens at the biological level. Exactly. And, and this is one of the benefits we have with tapping. And so if you're using a little bit of mindfulness and 
then you really are switching out of that fight and flight and, and freeze mode, which is a sympathetic, into the parasympathetic, which is the relaxation regeneration system. And that is always good for your immune system. Yeah. And I and I know people, you know, they're like, well, I don't know what to say. I don't I, I, I'm not hearing my body. I don't get what it's really telling me. And for people like that, I have an 88 and a half year old mother who goes, I forget to tap. And I realized she didn't forget to tap. She didn't know what to say, so she didn't tap. Right. And so I would just tell her, just tap on the points, you know, and as long as she's tapping on the points, she's already feeling the emotion. So it helps her relax and feel calmer without the stressing her about what she should say. Ideally, we can use the words and the emotions and things to our advantage to take it deeper. But if you can't, just tap. Uh, like I said, sometimes I'm walking on the street and I'm just tapping the wrist point as I'm walking along the street and I am not focusing on anything. But I am switching from sympathetic to parasympathetic system just by doing that as I'm moving through the street. So they become choices. You know, and and the mindfulness makes the choices more fine tuned, right? And I think that's just a benefit for everyone to be aware that they can do this, and it doesn't have to be, you know, an hour to hour session every time you have an emotion or reaction, or that you have an ache and pain in your body. You can do the mindfulness piece, and and just keep settling your body. You can go work with someone or you can sit down and, and do a longer process yourself at a, at a more appropriate time as well. So you've got all these options and that's one of the beauties of, you know, listening to your body and having a tool like tapping, which is, it's very fast, you know, and we need that in this, this very fast moving world that we live in. And one of the things that I guess the analogy that I use with my clients a lot in talking about I don't know what to tap on is oftentimes I like to think about dealing with an issue as being caught in mist. And when mm -hmm. I'm in the mist, I can't see what's around me. I just see mist. And so I don't exactly know what I'm dealing with. But with each successive tap and with each round of tapping, what we're doing is we're melting the mist away. And oftentimes in that process, all of a sudden, the details, the specifics, memories start to present itself. And we weren't going to have that information to begin with, but simply starting was going to start to create that space. And it just kind of crystallizes in front of us as we're doing that work. Yes, I agree. Awesome. Well, Deborah, thank you much for your time. I appreciate it. No, oh, you're welcome. It's always a delight to speak with you and, and talk about things that I love. So I hope you enjoyed that conversation. Lots of really good information on how you can be more mindful. Now, for some of us, tuning into our body isn't something that is natural to us, that we're not used to paying attention other than I am uncomfortable, I am in pain, I am in sore, whatever it is. So on the website, if you look below the audio player or if you happen to be listening to this in some podcast app, go into the show notes. What I have included is I have included 14 questions that you can use as a way of tuning into your body, especially for those of you who aren't used to doing this. What you can do is take some physical sensation, tension, pain, heaviness, whatever it is, and while you are tapping, ask these questions, and what it's going to do is it's going to start to show you how easy it is for you to tune into your body and to be able to do this more successfully. If you'd like more information about Deborah and the amazing work that she's been doing, especially in dealing with children who are dealing with cancer and tapping with them, go to tappingqnapodcast.com. Click on the link for episode 304. If you're listening to this in a podcast app, it's in the show notes. If you're on the website, just below the player, you will find all of her information, all of her contact stuff, and a really beautiful book that she has written based on her work working with those kids. If you have a question, a comment, or something you'd like to see us cover in the future, you can always reach out. Shoot me an email. My email is gene, G-E-N-E, -E, at tappingqna.com. If you're in the app, click on the contact part there. Or if you're on the website, up in the menu bar, click on contact. You can leave me a voice message 
or you can shoot me an email from both of those spots. I would love to hear from you. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss anything new when it comes out. We now have instructions on the website for Apple devices to be able to do it on Android devices through TuneIn, through Stitcher, all of those different places. Super easy for you to take this content with you wherever you go. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrastelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Montrastelli, Tapping Q&A 2016. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Montrastelli or Tapping Q&A.